What's up, guys? It's your boy Keeper Real MMA. Um, like I said, um, actually, I finished work a lot earlier, so uh, yeah, um, I'm willing to, but not willing. Sorry, I'm uh, able to make this uh, this video a lot uh, earlier tonight. Uh, it's only twenty past twelve, so you know it's not that's not that late to me at all. To be honest, with it was kind of like daytime. So anyway, um, yeah, it's uh, we've got you know, like I said, UFC two seventy nine is not good enough to be a pay per view card. Never will be. Um, it's a lot better than when it was first announced, though. A lot better, and I'm happy for that. So, uh, yeah, <clears throat> I'm glad of that. So, uh, yeah, let's get the let's kick it off with the first um, first fight of the card: Darian Weeks versus Johan Lanes. Right, uh, Darian Weeks is a minus one two five favorite, and Yo Johan is a plus one oh five uh, underdog. I'm going to go with the slight favourite in Darian Weeks. Um, I can see why you can pick Johan, uh, Johan Lanes. Darian Weeks have shown that he can be hurt with certain connections. Sorry, I got hiccups for some reason. <laughs> there we go. But, and, and you know, Darian Weeks have shown that he can get hurt in situ certain situations, but I feel like he can survive against Johan Lanes. I think Johan Lanes will make the same mistakes where he'll get get him hurt and then you'll you know you'll rush in and then once he rushes in he he can't get the finish and then he gasses out because Johan Lanes's gas tank is terrible in this short amount of time from his last fight I don't see him um I, I don't see him uh making massive cardio improvements because thing is he's not like Guzman so he's not on the source like Guzman so he's able to you know so, so he's not able to have the cardio with with the um with the power so I just think that Darian Weeks is going to get it done by third round TKO. That's what I'm going with. And uh, yeah, that's how I see it going. Johan Lanes's cardio is terrible, like I said. But it's, it's, it is a hard fight to pick because Johan Lanes can easily finish him in the first. But I just, I'm just i banking on Darian Weeks to survive that first round. And if he does, I think he got it from there on. Because Johan Lanes will gas out going for the finish, in my opinion. So Darian Weeks by um, third round TKO. Next fight on the card, Melissa Martinez versus Elise Reed. Um, uh, there's no odds on this one. Um, I'm gonna go with Melissa Martinez by thirty. No, thirty. Yeah, thirty twenty seven. Now, Melissa Martinez hasn't fought the best of opponents. She's fought decent opponents. Um, she, you know, what I mean, she, she hasn't fought bums, and Elise Reed is pretty good. She's twenty nine years old, but I just think. Elise Reed is in a lot of a rush and struggles against people who can grapple. And what I mean by she's in a rush is that the fact is she's 29. She's not as active as she'd like to be. This is one of the most active you know, uh, streaks that she's had. Um, her last fight, she won against Corey McKenna. But the only reason she won is because Corey McKenna didn't implement her grappling. If Corey McKenna did, she, she 100% would have won the fight by finish probably. But um, Melissa Martinez can grapple. She's quite rangy and she's able to... Um, she, I think she'll be able to keep her on the end of her punches. I mean, um, they got no stats for her for some reason, but she's seven and zero. I just, I just, I just don't see Elise Reed able to establish anything that she can. Is because I think Melissa Martinez will use all of her range, all of her range of arsenal that she has. So she uses her range, she uses her striking, she uses her grappling, and I just think that she'll get a 30-27 on for Elise Reed, in my opinion. As I see the fight going, it is a hard fight though because Melissa Martinez is a newcomer, but she has, you know, what I mean, she hasn't fought absolute bums. Like I, I look at her record right now, uh, Melissa Ma. Right. Um, right. Obviously, like, she didn't beat the best of, like, recorded opponents, but she beat Desiree Yanez, who was 5-1 and one at the time, split decision, which she did win, by the way. So, you know, she she's not fighting absolute bums, you know what I'm saying? Like, and the thing is, right, she, she has, you know, like, most of her opponents are, like, with 3-2 and two at the time. So that at least they have positive records in a way. But thing is, I just see Melissa Martinez being able to put the pressure on Elise Reed and, and implement all of her uh, arsenal of skill sets. So it'll prevent Elise Reed from taking advantage by just edging out the rounds like she did against Corey McKenna. So I see Melissa Martinez getting this done. Um, 
by uh, 3027 decision. Next fight on the card, Char uh, Chad Anilega versus Alatengeli. I struggle to say it. Chad is a plus 145 underdog. Uh, Atalegeli is minus 170 favorite. I'm going to go with Chad and Galega. Uh, the reason I'm going to go with Chad is... Well, actually, I'm going to pick him by... 29-28. I think Altalagani is going to win the first round, and I believe that Chad's going to win the next two rounds, just for pure hustle and heart. Chad has a very good re record. Hold on, I'll have a look now, just to make sure. Oh, fucking hell. Struggle with spell names. N-A-H. Fucking hell. There we go. Anilega. Um, The Monster. Nice. Obviously, he's 12-5. and five. He's, he's got decent wins. Uh, he's, he beat Dr Jesse Strader. Obviously, um, he beat uh, on the contender series. He beat uh, Moen uh, Gorov, who was sixteen and three at the time. Gorov, Gorov is uh, Gafarov is very good. Um, is Gafarov? Yeah, Gafarov is very good. Um, you know anybody with Ov and the last name? You know what I mean? They're really good. And uh, yeah, you know, so he fought very good guys. And I just feel like he's gonna out hustle Antigalegi. I just don't think Antigalegi has the heart of Chad. Uh, Chad Angalega does, and I just believe he's going to get it done by 29-28, where the last two rounds he grits down, he uses a strike and has decent takedown defence, and I just, I don't see Andrew Galele matching his tenacity, I really don't know matching the cardio and the output, you know, so I got Chad Angalega uh, winning by 29-28. Um, that's all really to say about the fight, to be honest with you. Like, it's just a straightforward pick, in my opinion. I I'm not going to say his lock of the card, because he's obviously an underdog, but I'd pick him. And especially because he's an underdog as well. It's just easier to pick, but yeah, China and Gallego by 29-28. Uh, Next fight on the card. Uh, uh, Norma Dumont versus Daniel Wolf. No odds on you. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Norma Dumont by third round TKO. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to go with 30-27 decision. Um, Danielle Wolf is 1-0. and um, She beat the 3-0 three, three and o, uh, prospect in the contender series at the time. She was, like, Danielle Wolf should not be in the UFC, in my opinion. Um, I just I just don't think she's that good. Um, I mean, she's a good-looking girl, but other than that, like, I just don't really see why she, she deserved to have a contract. Norma DeMont is at the top of the featherweight division, you know, out of all five fighters in the division. <laughs> so, um, but no, Norma DeMont has decent wins, man. She did beat Aspen Ladd, I mean, which is which is a decent win to have. I know Aspen Ladd was coming up a weight class, but, you know, it's not a bad win to have. And the thing is, right, she lost to um, Megan Anderson by KO, and she lost to Macy Chasson, who's higher up on the card. But... Which was a robbery, by the way. Norma Dumont definitely won. So you know she's a good fighter, man, and she does it, and she deserves some recognition for it. And I just feel like she's just gonna dominate Daniel Wolf. Daniel Wolf striking is just not all there, in my opinion. She has uh, not striking, sorry, grappling is just not all there. Um, the striking is there though, hundred percent. But I didn't mean the striking bit. But I just don't see her being able to stop the grappling of Norma Dumont, and I just think that don't, Norma Dumont's just gonna cruise to a thirty twenty seven decision, but dominant cruise, if you get what I'm saying. So. Yeah. Uh, next fight up the card is Jay Collier versus Chris Barnett. Jay Collier is a minus 410 favourite. Chris Barnett is a plus 330 underdog. I'm going to go with the favourite and Jay Collier. I did not expect these odds though, but yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm going to go with Jay Collier because the thing, the thing with Jay Collier is he just got robbed against Andre, Al uh, Andre Alblowski and Chris Barnett. In my opinion, right, that fight against Martin Boudet, I do not think that that was an illegal finish. The elbows were to the back of the year, which is actually legal. It's the same when Garn elbowed um, uh, Junior Dos Santos. It was behind the year. It wasn't illegal at all. Uh, Junior Dos Santos just got CTE and he's just fucking salty. But when Chris Barnett gets pressured, he doesn't know what to do. And he panics and he usually gets melted. And I just think this is what Jay Collier is going to do. Chris Barnett, he's good when you allow him, when you give him the space to be able to do those spinning back kicks, to be able to do this, this and that. But I just don't think he has the cardio necessary to not get melted by um by Jay Collier. Jay Collier has slick hands. He's good on the inside. And he's he's good at uh, just establishing his range. Um, thing is, right, like, 
Uh, he got robbed in his last fight, like I said. But uh, yeah, he's six foot three. Chris Barnett's only five foot nine. Chris Barnett's my height. I'm five foot nine. I weigh about one sixty five to one seventy. You know what I mean? Chris Barnett's like two sixty three. Um, but Jay Colley has the leg reach, the the actual reach advantage, three and a half inches of reach. Um, was it two, three? He's like six inches taller than Chris Barnett. Like I just, I just. Don't see how Jay Collier loses this fight in a way. Unless he gets caught. Unless he gets caught slipping and gets caught with a with a with a hook. Or he gives Chris Barnett just a little bit too much of space and he gets caught with a spinning uh, spinning back kick, you know, spinning wheel kick. I just don't see it happening. I see Jay Collier getting this done by third round TKO where he just melts Chris Barnett in the third and Chris Barnett's cardio just ain't there. He's too fat, he's flabby. I just see him getting uh I just see him getting uh, finished, to be honest with you. I mean, at the end of the day, right, like, Jay Collier got robbed against Andre Oblowski, bro. The way Andre Oblowski has been fighting in this heavyweight division is very underrated. And, you know what I mean, why well, he lost to Carlos Felipe, who was on, on the source, uh, which he arguably should have won. So, at the end of the day, Jay Collier is a very underrated guy, and I just think that he'll get it done. But that's just my opinion, obviously. But, yeah. Uh, next fight on the card is Dennis Tui Lewin. Versus Jamie Pickett. Uh, Dennis Tui Lewin is a plus 105 on the dog. Uh, Jamie Pickett's a minus uh, 125 favourite. Um, I'm actually going to go with the slight underdog in uh, in Dennis Tui Lewin. Not just because he's a slight underdog, but I just think that Jamie Pickett has a style, a very piss me off heavy style, where he just likes to hold people against the cage. He's not very impressive. And the thing is, right, with Jamie Pickett is, is that his loss to. Um, to um what's it called? Uh Kyle Dorcas, that's the one. He hasn't aged the best. And the thing is right, you can say what you want, but he gave up with less than ten seconds on the clock, he tapped, and he was nowhere near going out yet. So he has no dog in him. Y yeah, he has he has no dog in him. He has he has no fucking heart in my opinion. He's just got tin he's tin man to be honest with you. I just, I just see him getting, I just see him getting decision by Dennis Tuilu, and I just see him getting thirty twenty seven. I just don't see a way of Jamie Pickett winning without being able to hold him up against the fence. Dennis Tuilu is a good grappler. He's only lost to all the ovs, you know, the Dagestani ovs. And the thing is, is like I just don't see him losing to Jamie Pickett in that way. So I see him being able to grapple if he needs to, and just getting a thirty twenty seven uh, dominant thirty twenty seven, where Jamie Jamie Pickett can't really do anything to him. So. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. Dennis Tui Lewin, 30-27, unanimous decision. Next fight on the card, Jelten Jel Almeida versus Anton Turkalj. Um, right, well, I think the UFC fucked this up. Yeah, they've definitely fucked this up because they've put Jelten Almeida at plus 500 underdog and Anton Tur uh, Turkalj as a minus 675 favourite. I think it's the opposite way around. Jelton Almeida is going to be the favourite, 675 favourite. Um, and, and I am going to go with Jelton Almeida. Um, Jelton Almeida is definitely on the source. I mean, just look at him. And his teammate Carlos Felipe, like I said earlier, got popped for roids. So, you know, Jelton Almeida, though, he's a guy that they're building up. And he's very good. He's, he's a very, very good uh, prospect. Uh, well, contender really. He's number fourteen at um, either light heavyweight or heavyweight. You know, he beat Parker Porter at heavyweight, where he was on short notice. But now he's built up to the heavyweight size, and Anton has an at really at time. And Al Al Anton can grapple. He has grappled with Gustafsson, I believe, and he did lose to Gustafsson. But he, but you know, I mean, he's he's a decent grappler. I just see Jelton Almeida being too strong, too too powerful and just having too good a technique and having the pop in his shots to keep Anton honest. And I just think that Jelton Almeida is going to get a third round TKO where Anton won't be able to defend himself intelligently. So yeah, that's just how I see it going. It's a really good fight though. It, it Like in a sense of for Jelton, like it's so in his favour. Like if he loses this, man, I just, like that's how unbelievable it would be if he loses. So yeah, I got Jelton Almeida by by third round TKO. I just see him getting it done very handedly. Anton's very good though, man. He's not joke. It's just it's just what happens. You know what I mean? Like he's undefeated eight and oh he shouldn't be coming into the in you know really into the UFC really just like that. 
with it, no experience, no build up, just straight into Jelton Almeida. I just don't see him winning, so yeah. Jelton Almeida, third on TKO. Up uh, uh, next on the card, the last fight of the prelims. Hakeem Dawadu versus Julian Rosa. Hakeem Dawadu is a minus 215 favourite. Julian Rosa is a plus 185 on the dog. <gasps> Fucking hell. But, no, no but, but. I'm going to go with Hakeem Dawadu. By 30-27. Now, Julian Rosa, for some reason, this can't just really gives problems to people somehow he gives problems to people now i don't know why but he just does and he never looks impressive but it just sometimes is the reach and the height sometimes it gets to people like he's six foot one for featherweight which is very tall hakeem dawood who's only five foot eight but for some reason with julian arosa he's not that good yet he gives a lot of problems to people. Like I said, like he gave, he finished Charles Jourdain in the third round, you know, and and then he gets a was it a split decision, loss, a uh, win to what was it? Julian Arosa, like like what was it like was it? He loses, yo. Know, obviously, he gets knocked out by uh, Choi Sing Wu, and then. He um, was it twenty twenty? He lo he lo yo he beats Sean Woodson by submission, bro. It's crazy to me. And then he's lose and then he's losing, you know, by KO to Ju uh, Julia Ars. And then I say sorry. And then you know he's losing the decision by to Gra Grant Dawson, you know. And then and then he's knock knocking out Nate Langway, Nate the Train, in the first round. Was it the first round? Where he knocked out, uh... Where's the one where he knocked out, um... Nick the Train? Yeah, round one. You know, and... Like, it, it, it just... It's, it's a risky thing to fight him. Because for some reason, he just gives people problems. But I'm going to go with Hakeem Dawidu. He's a very, very big featherweight. You know, good size. Um, he's not a skinny little twerp for featherweight. Um, I just feel like Julian Rosen won't be able to do anything significant to him, like, you know, in the striking department or maybe even, like, the um, the grappling department. The thing is, Hakeem Dawadu brings a tough fight to anybody. I mean, like, Timo Valiev, like, he he really gave him a hard time. And the thing is, right, like, hold on, I look at Hakeem Dawadu now. Hakeem Dawadu. Like, Yeah, so, no, sorry, Mozva, uh, Mozva, Evo sorry, man, a lot of them have the same names, like, fucking mix up all the time, but, like, the thing is, right, like, he, do, he didn't get dominated in the grappling department as much as most people do against Evo so the thing is, right, he has very good grappling, I just don't see Julian Arosa being able to do anything to him, but I've been wrong before with Julian Arosa, so, careful with your bet on this one, but I'm going to go with Hakeem Dawadu by second round TKO. Okay? I He has a pressure heavy style and I don't see a Rosa uh, melting him like he did to Charles Jourdain. Take it with a pinch of salt. But I'm going to go with Hakeem Dawadu by second round TKO. Moving on to the main card. Johnny Walker versus Eon Kutalaba. Johnny Walker's a plus 165 underdog. Eon Kutalaba's a minus 195 favourite. Oh, this is a 50-50 fight in a way. Um, people are knocking on Johnny Walker's chin, but Ian Kutalaba has a better chin, don't get me wrong, but he does have a bit of a glass jaw as well. Now, I'm going to go with Ian Kutalaba by... Oh, I don't know. thing is, right, this fight can go either way, right? I think if this goes past the second round and Johnny Walker hasn't been too hurt... I feel like he can finish Young Kutalaba. I really feel like he can. But if but if like but if this is you know, if Johnny Walker gets hurt early on, I just see Young Kutalaba finishing him. 
um, like really putting him out badly cold because Johnny Walker just I don't know to describe it he just like he struggles to take a shot he just can't take a shot he has all of the genetics for light heavyweight six foot six 82 inch reach 44 and a half uh, inch le uh, leg reach like he has insane genetics man and he's massive he's tall he's rangy he just doesn't have a chin and the thing is right for a long time i thought that his problem was was that it wasn't his chin i thought it was just his defense like his defense was so bad that he'd never see the shots come in and that's how he get finished and which was the case most of the time but now i've seen him with good defense get caught and it's his chin he has a massive chin issue, he can't take a shot, and Ion Kutalawa can at least take a couple of shots. Like I said, he got a bit of a glass jaw, but he can't take shots before he gets put out or put down. I'm going to go with Ion Kutalaba by first round TKO. It's the safest bet to make in this fight. It's a 50-50 fight, though. I want Johnny Walker to win. I like Johnny Walker. I just can't trust to take him because he just doesn't have a chin. And that's just how I see it anyway, but... Yeah, Ion Kutalaba, first round TKO, but I hope Johnny Walker wins. Next fight on the card, I Irene Aldana versus Macy Chasson. Irene Aldana is a minus 175 favourite, Macy Chasson is a plus 150 underdog. I'm going to go with Irene Aldana by 30-27. Um, I actually just don't see Macy Chasson being able to do anything to her in terms of the way that she held Norma Dumont against the cage. Norma, Dum Norma Dumont won that fight based on damage because it's a damage-based sport. But, uh, yeah, um, I got Irene Aldana having better footwork than Norma Dumont, you know what I mean? Uh, I, you know what I mean? The only time she really lost, with, like, properly was to um, Holly Holm. And the thing is, right, like, Holly Holm just has very good footwork in a pure striking match. She's hard to hit. She's very elusive. So, And she likes to hold people against the cage herself, and she couldn't do that against Irene Aldana. So I'm actually going to go with Irene, Irene Aldana. Aldana getting it done by 30-27. Uh, Macy Chasson is just not that good, in my opinion, and I just don't see her being able to hold I Irene Aldana against the cage or being able to hold strikers. So, yeah, her boxing is very underrated. This is a very straightforward pick, in my opinion. So, yeah, Irene Aldana by 30-27, unanimous decision. So... Moving on up the card, Kevin Holland versus Daniel Rodriguez. Kevin Holland is a minus 195 favourite. Daniel Rodriguez is a plus 165 underdog. I'm going to go with Kevin Holland. I agree with the odds. Uh, Daniel Rodriguez has been off for over a year now. Um, his last fight was against Kevin Lee. And he took that on two weeks notice. And he broke his hand against Kevin Lee. He beat Kevin Lee. But uh, yeah, that's Kevin Lee coming up from uh, lightweight though. So... I just see Kevin Holland, right? Because the thing is, right, Kevin Holland is, what, 29, 30? And he's making rapid improvements. And it says catchweight bout, but I'm assuming it's going to be near the near the welterweight, you know, limit. Kevin Holland has crazy power, crazy range. 81-inch reach for a welterweight, well, middleweight, former middleweight. For, you know what I mean? And uh, Rodriguez actually has the one-inch, like, uh, leg reach advantage, but that's not really good about it because Rodriguez doesn't really kick as much as Kevin Holland. Uh, Kevin Holland's two inches taller. And the thing is, right, like, you look at their fighting styles, right? Like, Kevin Holland, his range is more deceptive than you think. You just think, oh, 81 inch reach, you know, his crazy thing. But he has this weird timing where you think that you're completely out of range with him. Like, you're, like, so far away and you're like, there's no way he can catch him from here. And he catches people. His range is awkward. Like, he did it to Buckley, to Joaquin Buckley the way that... Like, against Joaquin Buckley... Like, Buckley was literally moving out the range, like, taking extra precautions because because he's, like, leaning back when Kevin Holland's all the way over there from him. But Kevin Holland still fucking connects and lands on his chin and puts him out. His, his, his range is... Um, his range is different. Like, his range is really different. And I just see Kevin Holland, you know, getting used to his new weight class. He, it, take, like, it takes a couple of fights to get used to a new weight class. I, I noticed that trend between fighters. And he's had two fights at welterweight now. One and both. He looked terrible against Alex Oliveira. Not going to lie. He looked, he looked terrible until he got the finish. 
Well, he looked good in the second round before he got the finish, but he looked very good against Tim Means, and I think he's going to look at his best against Daniel Rodriguez. A Daniel Rodriguez that's been out for almost a year. And I just think that Kevin Owens is going to get a first round TKO over Daniel Rodriguez. I think Kevin Owens is going to start fast like he usually did in middleweight because now he's used to welterweight again. Because for those who don't know, he used to fight at welterweight. He actually has a finish over Jeff Neal. Um, but yeah, obviously he's fought the middleweight for so long. He hasn't really made that tiny little weight cut, weight cut down the welterweight for a while. So obviously he's won those two fights that he's done now. I just see him starting fast this time against Danny Rodriguez. And I just see him finishing him in the first round. Dwight Grant has awkward length. And he managed to catch Rodriguez and hurt him badly. And I think Kevin Holland's going to do the same thing to him. But they actually put him out. So yeah, I got Kevin Holland by first round TKO. Next one on the card doesn't have odds for some reason. And uh, it's a fight that should ne shouldn't even exist. But uh, here we are. Li Jing Lian versus Tony Ferguson. Obviously, I'm going to go with Li Jing Liang. I'm going to pick Li Jing Liang by second round KO. Um, pretty straightforward. I mean, he's a massive welterweight. Not as big as weight bully uh, Chemaev, but it is what it is. Um, he's very big. Uh, for welterweight, he's very strong as well. I just don't see Tony Ferguson having enough time to build himself up back up to welterweight. Because the thing is, he's he cuts a lot of weight to get on the lightweight, and he used to be a welterweight. But like, it's the same like with the Kevin Holland situation. Like Kevin Holland actually had enough time to go up, uh, go down to welterweight. Tony Ferguson hasn't given him hasn't given himself enough time to go up to welterweight. I just don't see where he has the prep time to be able to do this against Li Jing Liang. I don't see him getting Li Jing Liang to the ground. I don't see him implementing jujitsu against him. I just see Li, Li Jing Liang keeping it on the feet, being super patient and respectful in the first, and in the second, coming out guns blazing and being able to KO Tony Ferguson in the second. But, uh, yeah, I, I, this fight shouldn't happen, man. This fight's fucking ridiculous. I can't believe this fight's happening. Um, ridiculous. But, yeah, it is what it is, man. But, um, yeah. I got Li Jing Liang, second round KO. Ah, next fight on the card. Hamza Chumayev versus Nate Diaz. Hamza Chumayev is, is, is a 1,050 favourite. Nate Diaz is a plus 700 underdog. I'm going to go with Hamza Chumayev by... Third round TKO. This goes past the third round. Nate Diaz has a very good chance because Hamzat slowed down like fuck against Gilbert Burns, you know. That weight bully tactic ain't working so well when you're in a high paced fight that lasted more than two rounds, so but I just I just don't see how Nate Diaz wins here. I really don't. What's he gonna do? I mean, I don't think he has the power to put the way Hamzat or drop him, you know. Um he might have the power to wobble Hamzat maybe, because Hamzat doesn't have the greatest chin. I mean he got dropped by Burns when Burns wasn't even looking when he connected on him. So, you know, and he was at an awkward angle where he had to turn like that. And he still dropped Hamzat, so... Um, I'm still going to pick Hamzat. I just think Hamzat has too many tools. He's too good at wrestling. He's very strong and massive for welterweight, like I said. Nate Diaz is a small welterweight in that sense. I just... Don't see like where Nate Diaz wins this fight. He does. I don't think he's strong enough to implement his jujitsu. I just don't think that he has the necessary uh, skills to to, uh, to deplete Hamzat, and I just don't think that the cardio is going to be an issue because I generally think that Hamzat's going to get it done uh, in the third by TKO. I think he's just going to take Nate, Nate Diaz down, blast him with some elbows, blast him with. Um, Punches, you know, Nate Diaz is bleeding, going, uh, like, you know what I mean? You know Nate Diaz, man. I just think he'll eventually get finished with a ref and pull him off. I think Nate Diaz will, you know, complain about it, you know, because he's, you know, I'm from Stockton, man. You know what I mean? You know what he'll be like, but, um, um, respect for taking the fight, though, man. But, I mean, there's a reason why the UFC gave him this fight because of the, the contract negotiations, but, I see Hamza just running through him, to be honest with you, from start to finish. And I think he'll actually toy with Nate Diaz in the first two rounds, where he not necessarily have a chance to finish Nate Diaz, but I think he'll, he'll put him in very bad situations where he'll take him down, land good shots against Nate. And the third round, I think he'll start to feel a, a very tired because Nate will still try to push pace on him, even you know try to butcher him from the bottom, try to implement jiu-jitsu, try to pressure him in the striking. 
and um, I just think that you'll feel a little bit tired, so we'll decide to actually TKO Nate Diaz in the third. So yeah, Hamza Chimaya by third round TKO. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. That's the whole card. Thank you so much uh, for this, you know, for the new subscribers, uh, for running out my videos, liking and subscribing. I appreciate you all. Um, if you're new here, please, please like and subscribe. Like I said, you know what I mean. I, I appreciate every single one of you uh, for helping the channel grow and just engaging and the regular viewers. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, my TikTok is Keep It Real Edits. If you want to check out some cool edits, I'm posting in a while, but I will soon. And uh, yeah, this is Keep It Real MMA. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.